You know, the blue morpho butterfly is this incredibly vibrant blue color that is all a reflection of light. And, and so it's kind of an illusion. And the idea of, is this machine an illusion? Does it actually have the truth? Or do we just want to believe that it has the truth? Hi, how are you? I'm good. Nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you too. First of all, I have to say, I uh, love Shit's Creek. So congratulations uh, for its existence. <laughs> Thank I'm you. also really enjoying the big the big door prize so far. Thank you very I'm much. I'm wondering how did you go about deciding the changes that you are going to make from the novel and the way to best show it on screen? The novel is a great jumping off point for this series because it has this amazing premise of what if there was a machine that for two dollars could tell you your life's potential. And what I loved about it as a, as a TV series is there are so many different ways to explore that through different characters, different experiences, depending on where they are in their lives and how happy they think they are with their lives. Uh, so for the series, we knew that we wanted to give ourselves the longest road for stories possible. So the book has an ending and the book has kind of an explanation for the machine. And our series, we've instead developed the mystery and built the mystery of the machine and expanded the, myth the mythology of the Morpho machine so that we can go as many different places as possible with the story. Is that part of the updating the technology, I guess, of the machine too? Because I was thinking, if I, if, if the machine wants my social security number and my fingerprints, the first thing I'm doing is wondering if I'm being set up for a murder charge <laughs> yeah. or... <laughs> so how do you kind of negotiate people's reactions to that uh, in the modern day and then also the small town aspect of it where people might not even think of it? I love stories set in small towns and this also feels very specific to a small town where there's something new and it's so exciting. Everyone finds out about it immediately and everyone wants to try it, whether it's a donut shop or the Morpho machine. And the, you know, the fact that people have to give up their social security number and fingerprints just to get their life potential uh, felt very much like the modern world to me, where we're constantly sacrificing security and privacy to get whatever it is we think is going to make us happy. Um, and I and and then I loved kind of developing the design of the machine itself, this butterfly design, which is such a rich symbol. Uh, you know, not only because of the butterfly effect, but you know, the blue morpho butterfly is this incredibly vibrant blue color that is all a reflection of light. And, and so it's kind of an illusion. And the idea of, is this machine an illusion? Does it actually have the truth? Or do we just want to believe that it has the truth? That all felt really interesting to me. Like Dusty, I too had to Google it to make sure that the butterfly was the Morpho. <laughs> <laughs> so we are we are one there. Um, but I love the pairing of uh, Gabrielle and Chris O'Dowd. How did you, like, how were they cast? And what do they bring to their characters that aren't on the page? The cast is such an important part of the show. Um, they've been instrumental in shaping these characters with me. They bring so much uh, beyond what, you know, we came up in the writer's room. Uh, and I think what's special about this cast is they're all extremely funny, but they're also great dramatic actors and they bring an honesty and truth to their characters that allows you to take these tonal shifts where, you know, they can be big funny in one scene and then break your heart in the next. Um, so they're such a great group of people and they're all very close and I feel like we're building a little family in Deerfield. Well, I love that so much and I cannot wait uh, to learn more about each of the family members. Thank you so much. Thank you.